banded iron formations are distinctive units of sedimentary rock that are almost always of Precambrian age. A typical BIF consists of repeated thin layers of silver to black iron oxides, either magnetite or hematite, alternating with bands of iron pore shales and cherts, often red in color, of similar thickness, and containing microbands of iron oxides. Some of the oldest known rock formations, formed over 3,700 million years ago, include banded iron layers. Banded layers rich in iron were mostly deposited between 2,400 and 1,900 mile. Phanerozoic ironstones generally have a different genesis. Banded iron beds are an important commercial source of iron ore, such as the Pilbara region of Western Australia and the Anamigi group in Minnesota. Relation to atmospheric oxygenation, the formations are abundant around the time of the Great Oxygenation Event 2400 million years ago and become less common after 1800 Maya. Conditions of a reappearance of a sea with dissolved iron at 1900 million years ago, and later in association with Snowball Earth BIF reappeared 750 million years years ago and that is problematic to explain. Origins The conventional concept is that the banded iron layers were formed in seawater as the result of oxygen released by photosynthetic cyanobacteria. The oxygen then combined with dissolved iron in Earth's oceans to form insoluble iron oxides, which precipitated out, forming a thin layer on the ocean floor, which may have been anoxic mud. Each band is similar to a valve to the extent that the banding is assumed to result from cyclic variations in available oxygen. It is unclear whether these banded ironstone formations were seasonal, followed some feedback oscillations in the ocean's complex system are followed some other cycle. It is assumed that initially the Earth started with vast amounts of iron and nickel dissolved in the world's acidic seas. As photosynthetic organisms generated oxygen, the available iron in the Earth's oceans precipitated out as iron oxides. At a suspected tipping point where the oceans became permanently oxygenated, small variations in oxygen production Production produced periods of free oxygen in the surface waters, alternating with periods of iron oxide deposition. Snowball Earth Scenario Until 1992, it was assumed that the rare, later banded iron deposits represented unusual conditions where oxygen was depleted locally, and iron-rich waters could form and then come into contact with oxygenated water. An alternative explanation of these later deposits has undergone much discussion as part of the Snowball Earth hypothesis. Several hypotheses exist for the initiation of the Snowball Earths. The initiation mechanisms which include the breakup of the early equatorial supercontinent, the first colonization of the land by early lichens and fungi and variations in the Earth's axial tilt are yet to be convincingly identified. In a Snowball Earth state the Earth's continents, and possibly seas at low latitudes, were subject to an ice age. If this was the case, Earth's free oxygen may have been nearly a totally depleted during a severe ice age circa 750 to 580 million years ago. Dissolved iron then accumulated in the oxygen-poor oceans. Following the thawing of the Earth, the seas became oxygenated once more causing the precipitation of the iron. Another mechanism for BIFs, also proposed in the context of the Snowball Earth discussion, is by a deposition from metal-rich brines in the vicinity of hydrothermally active rift zones. Alternatively, some geochemists suggest that BIFs could form by direct oxidation of iron by microbial and oxygenic phototrophs. Effective asteroid impact Northern Minnesota's banded iron formations lie directly underneath a thick layer of material only recently recognized as ejecta from the Sudbury Basin impact. 
that, at the time of formation Earth had a single supercontinent called Columbia with substantial continental shelves. An asteroid slammed into waters about 1,000 meters deep some 1.85 billion years ago. Computer models suggest that the tsunami would have been at least 1,000 meters at the epicenter, and 100 meters high about 3,000 kilometers away. Those immense waves and large underwater landslides triggered by the impact stirred the ocean, bringing oxygenated waters from the surface down to the ocean floor. Sediments deposited on the seafloor before the impact, including BIFs, contained little if any oxidized iron, but were high in reduced iron. This fate of Fe ratio suggests that most parts of the ocean were relatively devoid of oxygen. Marine sediments deposited after the impact included substantial amounts of Fe but very little Fe. This suggests that sizable amounts of dissolved oxygen were available to form sediments rich in Fe. Following the impact dissolved iron was mixed into the deepest parts of the ocean. This would have choked off most of the supply of Fe to shallower waters where BIFs typically accumulated. The geological record suggests that environmental changes were happening in oceans worldwide even before the Sudbury impact. The role the Sudbury Basin impact played in temporarily shutting down BIF accumulation is not fully understood. 